Come in, come in. Thank you, Mrs. Solomon. I just stopped by for the rent. Come in. You'll have maybe a glass of tea with us. Well, yeah? I don't want to put you to any trouble. It's not trouble. <laughs> All my trouble should be like that. A boy should listen to his elders. I don't care. I've got a right to my life the way I want to live. But Milton, Mama and I... Benny. Benny, please, sir. We got company. Oh, that's eh? all right, Mrs. I'm no company. I, I, I'm going in a minute. You'll have a glass of tea, Mr. Nemo, with lemon, maybe, eh? Rosie? Yes, Mama? Bring Mr. Nemo a glass of tea with all the... No, no, that I go fix it myself. You'll excuse me, please, Mr. Nemo. Hey, Mr. Nemo, listen, maybe you'll talk to my milk. Why, what's the matter with him? Oh, you'd think I was a kid. Think I didn't have any brains. Uh, brains he thinks he has yet. Listen to him. Twenty years old, so he wants to get married. Well, why not? Why shouldn't I get married? People get married every day. I'll talk to him, Mr. Nemo. To you, he'll listen. Tell him he's making a mistake. Well, I don't know. How can I tell him when I don't know what it's about? Here's the tea, Mr. Nemo. Drink it in good health. Thanks. Suppose you start at the beginning, Milton. Well, there's nothing to tell you. I, I just want to get married, that's all. Hey, uh, he's our baby yet, so he wants to get married. Are you in love? Oh, am I in love? I, I get dizzy every time I think of her. I, I can't sleep thinking about her. And she's a good girl? She's everything I ever looked for in a girl. And she's getting such a terrible break. Living all alone like that, stuck away in a whole bedroom. How uh, often he wants to marry up, Mr. Nemo. A girl without people, without anything. Oh, who wants anything? I just want to get married and have a home of my own. I've got a right to that, Mike. Well, why don't you listen to me, Milton? You want to be like me? In a factory, standing on my feet all day till I think they'll drop off? You should be a lawyer. You should have a profession. Yeah, yeah, and starve like every other young lawyer in town. Sure, that's wonderful. But can you take care of a wife, Milton? Oh, I guess so. I've got a job. I'm making money. Well, you can't just guess, Milton. You have to know. A married man has responsibilities. When the minister makes you one, you've got to start paying for two. Oh, all right. I, I make 24 a week. And Jenny makes 14. We can get along on 38 a week, can't we? A lot of people get along on less. Yes, they do. You know what, Milton? For a wedding present, I'll give you a month's rent free in the vacant flat. Oh, oh you will? A and you'll fix the sink, too? Uh, uh -oh. Mr. Nemo, <laughs> you shouldn't talk like that. Milton shouldn't get married, not yet. Why? Why? You hear that, Benny? Sure. Why shouldn't he get married? He's a young man. He's in love. What's wrong with his getting married? Listen, Mr. Nemo, all our life we made big plans for that boy. We sent him to school. We looked after him. And now? Yes. He owes us something. He should do anything what we want him to do for his own good. He owes you a lot, Mr. and Mrs. Solomon, but you own something, too. You own the right to live his own life, to find his own happiness. You're all right, Mr. Oh, I should think I should live to see such a day. <laughs> oh, you, you, you really think I ought to get married, Mr. Nemo? I do, Milton. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be very happy. And I think you'll make your parents happy, too, once they realize that marriage doesn't mean losing a child, but gaining another one. Oh, gee. Thanks, Mr. Nemo. Uh, and did you, uh, did you mean that about the flat? Of course. I'll tell George about it right away. I never thought I'd have to fix that thing. Come in. Uncle Dan? Hello, Mr. Nemo. Uh, uh, turn on the light, will you? Well, we'll have to see that you get better service than this. All alone up here in the dark. There, that's better. Yeah. Oh, you didn't eat that good soup, did you? <laughs> it's kind of you to send it, Mr. Oh, Nemo. nothing at all. <laughs> but I haven't any appetite. Well, they won't be bothering you very much longer. Or anyone else. Oh, nonsense. The best years of your life are ahead of you. No. They're behind me. A long good years they were. I've lived my life and I have no regrets. Not many can say that. That's right. There aren't many, huh? I can look back a long way. Seventy odd years, years. There's not a single regret in any of them. I had my happiness, full measure of it. Now I'm, I'm going to rest. Maybe I'd better go, huh? Uh, no, I, I... I wish you'd stay. Just for a little while, if you have the time. I have visitors so seldom. Can I do something for you? 
There's one thing that makes me very happy. Of course. Anything at all. Over there, right in back of you on the table, is my Bible. Will you read something to me? Just for a little while. All right, Uncle Dan. Close your eyes and try to sleep, and I'll be right here reading to you. Let's see now. Oh, here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow. Uncle Dan. Uncle Dan. Say, Mr. Nemo. Mr. Nemo. Miss Lewis done had a little baby. Oh, really? From oh, Mr. Nemo. Come on, says it's okay for Jenny and me to get back. Why, well, what's the matter? It's Uncle Dan. I'm afraid he... Oh, uh, George. Uh, George, let's get Dr. Miller. Uh, yes, sir. A single day. Just another day to most folks, and yet... I've seen a whole existence pass before my eyes. Life, marriage, death, right here in my house. And it's only... The first of the month. Friends, tonight there's a very special celebration going on in Hollywood over on the MGM lot. An elaborate banquet is being held, part of which you will hear soon. We're happy that Maxwell House is playing a part in this banquet tonight. Not only because so many of these famous stars have appeared on this program in the last two years, but also because Maxwell House has come to be their coffee. At this time, when we observe our Thursday evening's custom, a moment's relaxation over a steaming cup of Maxwell House coffee, these stars are toasting one of the greatest, most beloved American actors, a famous member of a great acting family, Lionel Barrymore, on the eve of his 61st birthday. And so, in honor of this man, perhaps you in your homes would like to join us in a toast to him. We pause briefly for station identification. KFI Los Angeles. Bob Young again, and we continue our Maxwell House Good News program. Meredith Wilson gets us started with a grand number, God's Country. Give a hand, give a hand. 